Before we get started, John Mann has opened up a public Discord server for all you people out there to join. The invitation link is in the description below. The Massage Mid 262 is thus sleek. Sexy, shark face grandfather of all modern jet fighters, and as such, this video's secondary subject will be an operator's guide on the basics of jet fighter combat for all the prop jockeys out there. First off, we need to get those fans spinning, which happen to be the signature feature of this wonder waffen, the young Kazumo 004B1 Axel Flow Turbo Jet Engine. That sentence had too many syllables! Apologize! which usually come in a pair, with one slung under each wing. And since we no longer rely on a propeller, to create the thrust necessary for getting into the skies, we must measure jet engine power by the thrust, generated measured in kilonewtons, of which each engine produces over 8.8k in each, which can get the swallow up to over 865 kilometers per hour at around 6000 meters. Despite this advancement in technology, early axle flow jet engines such as the 004 suffer two major disadvantages, poor heat management and fragility, as even a glancing blow can cause one or both of your engines to go kaput faster than a retreating Frenchman through the fields toward Dunkirk. And if one or both of your engines does take a hit, it is advisable to make like previously mentioned Frenchman and retreat to the nearest airfield for a repair, and whatever you do, do not try to pull straight up into a stall climb, otherwise your pilot will suffer a particularly embarrassing and severe emotional event. Aber mein Führer, die 12. Armee marschiert nach Westen Richtung Elbe. Dann schalt ihr Armee kehrt nach! Dann entlösen wir die Westfront. Ich habe mich klar genug ausgedrückt! Das war ein Befehl! Der Angriff Steiners war ein Befehl! Mein Führer. Verrat! Die gesamte Generalität ist in zwei, drei, ein Haufen niederträchtiger Treuer oder Feiglinge! Mein Führer, ich kann nicht zulassen, dass die Soldaten, die für Sie verbringen... Ist das Feiglinge! Verrat ein Versager! Going into flight performance, the Mr. Schmidt can feel heavy and sluggish on takeoff, but once it begins to gain speed and climb to an operational altitude, it becomes a smooth operator, with an agility and nimbleness that can outclass other early jet fighters in its battle rating under the right circumstances. Speaking of slow takeoffs, landing the Swallow is actually a complete breeze thanks to the tricycle landing gear and the leading edge wing slats, which makes it relatively easy to slow down this Jagger for a prim and proper landing. But of course, the fastest method for landing this jet is just to simply slide in on your engine nacelles to a emergency stop, because superior German engineering. Now onto the board Waffens, which is four of the glorious MK108 short barreled machine cannons, with a total of 360 rounds of hot, high explosive 30mm cartoffel mine shell action. But just like an actual underpowered potato cannon, the muzzle velocity of the 108 is very disappointing, only 540 meters per second, which means there is a noticeable drop off in the shell's trajectory at around 300 meters. This can easily throw off unsuspecting pilots who are used to having laser pointer like accuracy with other guns at well beyond such a short range. However, the low muzzle velocity is overcompensated by the extreme prejudice that the 30mm mine shells have against anything it hits from the largest bombers to some dumb bastard up tearing a biplane because mad maymays. And besides the cannons, you also have the option of carrying up to 48 R4M rockets which have one purpose, and one purpose only, point blank range destruction of every heavy bomber in fucking existence because glorious German overkill. And now we talk about the basics of jet combat, which begins with three very important rules. One, you're not a prop player. 2. You're not a prop plane. 3. Verdammte Scheiße, du bist keine behinderte Taube mit einem Fidget-Spinner! Idiot! If you haven't figured it out yet, the first and most important concept in the art of jet combat is that dog fighting like a weeb UFO should be thrown out the window and into the garbage can. 
for it is a severe waste of energy to frequently throw any jet around in tight maneuvers that you could normally get away with in a peasant fidget spinner with wings. Thus we are led to the most important difference between prop fighters and jet fighters, top speed and climb rate, which means that an engagement is moving faster than the mouth of some Eastern European Rick Asley knockoff when his ego gets horribly bruised by some lucky noob on the enemy team. <laughs> However, just because everything is moving faster than a bullet named William doesn't mean that dog fighting in the jet age doesn't happen. Instead, dog fights in the jet age generally take up more space in the sky, with maneuvers going wider and higher, while taking place at oblique angles, rather than purely in the horizontal. So, for those pilots transitioning from prop fighter to jet fighters, it is pretty that you practice and master the art of energy fighting focusing slightly more on boom and zoom tactics, and getting used to avoiding horizontal turns at speeds generally above 450 km per hour. Instead, perform climbing or diving turns to conserve or gain energy, in order to either bug out from an undesirable situation or to get onto the tail of the enemy and promptly delete their aircraft from existence. <laughs> of course. There are several other variants of the Swallow, that we will quickly touch on. Starting with the rarest of all, the A2A Sturm Foggle, which gains the ability, to become an extremely potent close air support strike fighter at the cost of two of its cannons, but with a battle rating of 6.7. Even two of these Kartoffel cannons can make quick work of basically everything that gets in its way. Next up are the Hamer shooters, both of which don't differ much from the A1A other than the fact that both have rocket boosters built into the aircraft which dramatically increases their climb rate and acceleration for a maximum duration of around 6 minutes at your leisure. This allows these 8.0 battle rated sharks to either offer stomp 7.0 jets or find themselves in for a tough fight against Cold War era 9.0 jets, which is not impossible, but very difficult, unless the enemy team is full of retards. The last variant available for a search is the glorious A1U4 Pulk Destroyer, which trades off the four small penas for one massive pena, a 50mm auto cannon, that is adept at basically fucking everything and anything that bears, to invade the skies over the fatherland. Now it's time for modules and crew skills, but this time we start with just fuselage repair, since early jet engines don't have a concept of what radiators are, and constantly overheat anyway. After that, focus primarily on getting all the performance and survivability mods, as the cannon's default belts are still more than enough to knock out enemy aircraft with a well-aimed close range burst. Only then should you even think about unlocking the giant fireworks. As for crew skills, nothing is more important in the age of jet fighters than your pilot's ability to withstand high G-forces for long periods of time, especially since the concept of G-suits and boosted control surfaces was apparently lost on Miss Erschmidt's research and development department like The Great War Part 2 directed by Michael Bay, and that is how you fly the Miss Erschmidt 262. Now get out there, and annihilate everything that moves, while not merely bragging about German technical superiority, but stating the fucking obvious. 